everybody, welcome back. Well, across the country, we are seeing police departments really narrow down on training to help them better respond to situations that involve people who have autism. Yeah, that's right. And then you actually spoke with the Las Cruces Police Department about their training when it comes to those cases in particular. Yes, exactly. I was able to sit down one on one to talk with Las Cruces Police Chief Jeremy Story about how they're working to enhance their training amid a rise in diagnosis. Take a listen. I think a lot of it is about awareness, just understanding. The Las Cruces Police Department responds to hundreds of calls a week. And as more people are diagnosed with autism every year, the chances of them answering the call for help involving a person who is autistic is a lot higher. My autistic son left the house trying to follow him in my car because he refuses to get in the car. We've seen, um, obviously, the number of kids being diagnosed with autism increase you know, year after year. And so those kids become adults and our interactions with people with autism are only gonna increase. So we wanted to get in front of it and, and do what we can to help. The department partnering with a local nonprofit. Probably about five years ago, we partnered with Hearts for Autism. Creating this training plan to help officers identify and respond to people who are on the spectrum. Every academy goes through it and then everybody went through the full program three years ago and then again this year. And then we partnered with another um, organization for this year to do um, some additional training and then include scenarios that they do with law enforcement. I obtained the 2021 training plan in its entirety. It breaks down the statistics from 2000 to 2020 of those being diagnosed. The most recent data on this plan from 2020 showing one in 54 people were diagnosed with autism. Hector Adame with Hearts for Autism and the founder of an autism and behavioral pediatric clinic addressing those numbers today. The prevalence right now, it's now like one in 36 individuals. So imagine these are little kids who are gonna be adults. And the goal is that our, our law enforcement who is here to help us and protect us to have more tools. Adame is the man at the forefront of this training for officers in not only the Las Cruces Police Department, but in the El Paso Police Department as well. Level of training right now that's being provided that I, I get to be a part of, it's an eight hour training for law enforcement. I've been specializing on autism for 24 years now. So the goal is to give them some insight of what to expect what to expect to help this person, what kind of difficulties this person might be running into. And in many cases, to consider that verbal dialogue might not be your main tool. The possibility of the autistic individual being nonverbal, along with other ASD characteristics are detailed in this report, some of which include lack of eye contact, the possibility the person could try to walk away from the officer to avoid an intimidating presence, and then also repetitive behaviors, including stimming. In many cases, uh, these first responders could be strangers to a child with autism or a teenager with autism. And the goal is to provide law enforcement and first responders with training on how to interact during those cases when it's an individual with, uh, with autism or a related uh, developmental deficit. The training session breaking down ways to support these individuals in the moment and how to handle different scenarios, including if an arrest does need to be made, reminding officers to remain calm and unless there's an immediate threat to take their time and talk them through the process, highlighting that a person with autism does not always process consequences the same way that other people do. Obviously, it's a broad spectrum. The behaviors can be very different, but recognizing just some of those things can help avoid miscommunications or misunderstandings and allows us to do our job better. Yeah, definitely an important partnership there in Selena. Is there other tips that Chief Story told you about to continue to help them better um, those call outs? Yes, so you obviously heard that 911 audio during that story there. Well, I was able to request that from the Mesilla Valley Regional Dispatch Authority and they yeah. sent that to me and that was from a mom in Las Cruces who called 911. And what you notice is they immediately, the mom identified that her son involved was autistic. That is exactly what you want to do. If you're calling 911 and you know the person in involved has autism let them know as soon as possible because then they're able to have a heads up on that take that into consideration and provide better service we're going to go ahead and post the entire lesson plan that i was able to obtain of this training and what exactly it entails on our website at kfoxtv.com